Hey everyone, my name is Clark and I'm going to show you how to map 3D data, aka georeferencing, and why this is one of the most powerful things you can do with your 3D data. So let's go check it out. All right, before we get started, first, let's cover some terms. One of the most important things to understand is this concept of a coordinate system. And today we're going to cover two of the most important ones, a geographic coordinate system, which allows you to work in 3D across a spherical surface, such as the Earth, and a projected coordinate system, which allows you to work in 2D, such as on a map. Now, the reason why coordinate systems are so important is because this is how literally everything is mapped to the Earth, whether you're tracking the location of your Uber driver from your phone, or you're trying to figure out exactly where Mount Everest is. And if you're working with 3D geospatial data, the default reference system is the WGS-84, or the World Geodetic System 1984, that the US Department of Defense standardized in 1984. Fun fact, the reference system that your GPS uses is the WGS-84 coordinate system. Now, both the geographic and projected coordinate systems, and I'm just going to say GCS and PCS from now on, use horizontal X and Y values in order to locate where exactly in the world you are. For GCS, these horizontal measurements are your latitude and longitude measurements expressed as degrees. And for PCS, these horizontal values are linear measurements that are actually converted from GCS angular measurements and then expressed as Cartesian coordinates in feet or meters. And not to get too deep, but if you're working with 3D data, you also have to consider the vertical values, which tells you the height and depth of where an object is in the world, typically in relation to sea level. Okay, last thing about coordinate systems, and then I promise we'll get past the boring stuff. Remember WGS84? Well, turns out the world is a pretty big place, and that is not the only reference system in use. Not even close. In fact, there are over 6,000 reference systems currently in use today, and depending on where in the world you are, you will be using one of those. So, for example, if you are doing 3D mapping in California, you will be on the NAD83 coordinate system. Okay, now that we're all experts in coordinate systems, let's get to the fun stuff. How do you actually map 3D data to the world? So the official term for mapping 3D data is called georeferencing, which is just the process of assigning a geographic coordinate to every point of your 3D point cloud. And there are essentially two ways you can do this. Uh, the first way is to use an inertial navigation system or an INS attached to your LiDAR sensor. And the second way is to use ground control points to georeference your point cloud. And for the purposes of this video, we're only going to discuss the direct georeferencing method of using an INS. Now, the reason why an INS is so important is because while your LiDAR device might know how to plot the points in the point cloud relative to the object that's scanning, it actually has no idea where in the world it actually is, which is where the INS comes in. The INS is this cool piece of technology that gives you both the GPS data and the angular data of the location of the LiDAR device as it's moving around and doing the 3D scanning, which is why a lot of people doing 3D mobile mapping with LiDAR will attach an INS to the drone or to the vehicle that's collecting that data so they can pull the GPS data and the angular data off of that device embed it into each point of the point cloud and use software such as ArcGIS Pro or MD Infinity to create a finished georeferenced point cloud. And once you have a processed georeferenced point cloud and you know which coordinate system you're operating in, boom, you're ready to go. You're ready to start 3D mapping. Okay, so let's take a look at an example now. Here we have a finished georeference point cloud of the University of Oregon's Austin Stadium. Go Ducks! As you can see here, the reference system is NAT83. Uh, and you can also see the latitude and longitude information on the bottom there as well. Uh, and just in case you're wondering, if the longitude is negative, that means the location of this point of interest is west of the prime meridian. And if the latitude is negative, it means it's south of the equator. Uh, you can also see the projected coordinate system values there uh, with the X and Y values in meters. And again, that's just a mathematical conversion from the GCS latitude and longitude values. Okay, so. What can you do with this georeference point cloud? Well, of course, you can map it. So if you wanted to see it on a street map, you can do that. Uh, you can also you know, turn on the satellite map as well if you want to see it against a natural terrain. Uh, let's just quickly go to the presentation mode here. If you want to, you can quickly zoom out and you know see where it is in the world. You can also quickly zoom back in by using the direction cube up here to snap back to your point of reference. And of course, the value here is 
Now you have 3D data mapped to a 2D map, which allows you to grab information such as height and, and depth that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get from a 2D map. So here you can see when we turn on the height measurements, you can see this building is uh, four nine meters tall. You can also turn on terrain view and see the elevation of the different terrain. Now, uh, I guess this terrain is pretty flat, but you can clearly see the height uh, and elevation of this roof relative to, for example, the river. So there you have it, 3D mapping. Check out the descriptions below for the link to the awesome stadium file using this video. And let us know in the comments if there are other places in the world you'd like to see a 3D map for. See y'all next time.